uh, with just seeing that the Fury and Usyk rematch undercard. And it's a pile of crap. Most fans are calling this a trash undercard, and it's usually disappointing with people claiming that the money's going to the big boys at the top. And many people feel there should be room for fighters such as Joseph, Papa, Hula Zhang, and Caballero. Meaning they wanted to see some other heavyweights in action. And I will mention Martin Bacoli and the likes of Philip Hergovic would have also been good additions to what is a totally crap undercard. We get to see rising talent, but at the end of the day, it's hardly a great undercard of the best heavyweights in the division being Tyson, Fury, and Alexander Usyk. Now, the problem is. The Saudis promised us only the best. They told us that they would pull on the very, very, very best fights. Part of the reason for this is likely because they're pulling on too many fights too soon. You know, we've got the um, Terbidev and Bivol fight. We had the Joshua and Dabar fight. And now we have, obviously, the Fury and Usyk rematch. So that's three cards in a short space in time and I believe that boxing just isn't that deep you know Tank Davis is in America Kerno Alvarez is in America they haven't shown that much interest in featuring in Saudi Arabia or they would have been in Saudi Arabia okay now what this means is that it appears the Saudis are relying on Fury, Usyk and Joshua this in part isn't their fault. Wilder was basically going to be part of Rehad season massively, but he's had two defeats now and he's cleared his shot to pieces. Joe Joyce, after his losses to Jilei Zhang and Derek Tujora, also shot to pieces. So therefore, there's limited stock, limited fighters that can actually appear that will actually get the interest of boxing fans. But it begs the question, now Joshua is close to the end, and Fury, if he hots a poor performance and he dips down further, you've got to question whether this is sustainable. Where are the new fighters coming from? Where are the new talent? I understand that it's not the Saudis' fault if the fighters are not available to fight, or if there's a limited amount of stock, meaning fighters. But I don't see this Saudi boxing renaissance continuing. Remember, HBO dropped boxing many years ago after promoting Genegin Golovkin and Kovalev as the next big things, and unfortunately, they started getting the losses and it wasn't really bringing attention to the sport the way that they wished. Now, if we look at the first undercard between Fury and Usyk, it also wasn't that spectacular. I'll pop that up on the screen. It was a better undercard, you could argue, but was it? Kov Kovalev, an old man. I mean, Cabal versus Sanchez. I mean, Jay Opatai, you could say, whilst it was a good fight, does he really have the interest? Does he have the gravitas of a worldwide scout? Um, I would say he potentially could, but not right now. So if we compare both of the undercards, I would say they're not actually amazing. Yeah. You've got to remember there's a trade-off between fights in the UK and fights in Saudi. The last fight between Usyk and Fury started at 12 at night, okay, UK time. Where else? The Joshua and the Bar fight, I believe that started at 10 to half 10. Now, for the working man, that's a big difference, like an hour and a half, two hours. Someone who's got to get up for work the next day, um... Clearly, you want the fight starting at 10, half 10, and not 12, night. So, therefore, there is a trade-off. And there's also transport as well. Like, you, you want to go to your friends, or you want to go out to watch the fight. And it's going to be more difficult to get home if the fight starts at 12 o'clock. But the fact this is in Saudi, look, there's a lack of atmosphere. 
we all know that a fight in Rehad is not going to be the same atmosphere as Wembley Stadium. So whilst these big fights are being put together, and we should appreciate what has been done for the sport, we need to also understand a trade-off, what is being taken by these fights being in Rehat. And for me, I don't see this continuing. I mean, I don't believe the talent pool that the promoters currently have will be enough for this to continue. I mean, we've had some great cars. We had that great heavy heavyweight card where there was a, a whole bunch of fights. And you've got to say that it isn't the Saudis' fault that Joshua basically has pulled the wool over people's eyes um, by having three crap fights in Garnu, okay, and Wallim and Hellenius, all in Rehad, okay. So Joshua has had non entity fights for Rehad's season. It's only Daniel Debar that actually gave him a credible fight out of his last four fights it was for the Rehad season. So We've also got the fact that Fury also be, sorry, also be and fought in Garnu. It was a novelty act, and we saw that Garnu was a novelty act. I've like been destroyed against Joshua, who is not the best best heavyweight out there, no matter what you personally believe, as it was shown with the bar. So what we've got, we've had some novelty fights from the Saudis. To be honest with you, it's not their fault. With Wilder, nobody thought that Wilder would be as bad as what he is. But the Saudis are not putting on these amazing shows that we um, anticipated. Sure, they have put on some very, very good cards, and they are getting some of the big fights together. But outside of this, where does it go? I mean, if, if Fury turns up and he's an old man, and he gets worse and worse, as Joshua gets worse and worse, and they, they progress downwards, where do they go? Where is the interest? Where are the fights where people are going, wow, you know, I, I, I can't wait to see this fight. Once again, it's not entirely their fault. You know, they they can't create boxers out of thin air and they can't keep boxers performing. But at the end of the day, I just don't see this lasting. I have I, I come to think of these two undercards. It's a bit gimmicky, isn't it? Like, why the hell would you have Kovalev fighting? You know, the guy came out of retirement. He had nothing left when he lost to Canelo Alvarez. So if you look at these cards, I'm not that impressed. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just really not that impressed at all. I mean, if you look at both the the cards, the the first fight, the rematch, are they pulling the wall over our eyes here? Are we still getting a lot of novelty? I think we are. I don't. I, I know Rehad season's been going for quite some time. It's a good promotional group. That's had a lot of good fights. I think they've overstretched. I think they're pulling on too many cars, and I just don't see where the new talent's going to come from to keep people interested. To be honest with you, I mean, um, Joshua's no longer a marketable commodity at the highest, highest level uh, for a pay per view fight, unless it's against Usyk or Fury. Um, Gabal, yeah, he is someone who will be doing numbers. He is someone that we would love to see against Zhang. Another Usyk rematch, Tyson Fury. Look, any of the good, good top guys, you know, Debar is that commodity that nobody seems to be that interested in Debar's personality. So therefore, he, he hasn't got that formidable presence that Joshua, Fury, and Usyk actually has. So therefore, that's going to be a bit tricky, you know, marketing a guy that most people find a little bit dull and boring. I personally don't. I think he's a nice kid, but you know. It's not going to last, is it? I don't think it's going to last. And especially with Eddie Hearn rubbishing um, the likes of Philip Hergovic because he didn't want to give Daniel Debar the credit for that victory, even though, in my opinion, Hergovic would have beat um, Joshua. It doesn't help when promoters are talking down um, fighters for their own personal benefit and ego because it also makes it less exciting. You're meant to pick all these fighters up, not speak them down. And um, I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. I mean, you need to understand a lot of these fighters in America, such as Tank Davis and Canelo Alvarez, had not fought for the rehab season. It's going to be tough to get Canelo out there. I mean, he is the biggest name in boxing. 
I'm sorry. He 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 just is. He does some serious numbers. Attack Dave is, is great. Now you can say Bivol, Paterviev, you know, that's a great headline. Are they that entertaining? I as personalities, no, they're not, are they? As fighters, yeah, you can't take anything away from them. But they are not these guys that have that star quality like a Fury or Joshua. That is the problem that Rehad Season will have. Because we already had the Beterviath and Beevil match postponed. So we've had to wait so long now for that fight. I'm, I'm kind of bored with the waiting, the waiting. It's, it, it's just a sad indictment of a lack of talent in in boxing pretty much you know over the other side of the pond in america sure there's there's a lot of excitement going on i mean sand sandy ryan and mccade mayor i think that was a great fight that would have been a great addition to this um undercard you know on gardner you know um carisha shields even though there's not many opponents for them to actually fight and that's the problem Katie Taylor, I mean, there's there's a lot of names you can pull out there, even in the female um, division, that would make it more credible than these undercars. So what I'm deriving at, we've got a lot of trade-offs, we've got a lot of negatives by um, having the sport in Saudi Arabia. You know, the atmosphere, uh, the fact that fans really can't afford to go watch the fight in person. Um... So there is, there is, there is, there is trade-offs to be, to be, to be, to be had, and I just don't see it lasting. I don't think it's all cracked up. I think it's running out of steam. Personally, um, had Wilder stayed on on top of his game, and Joyce, you know, possibly, but all these other heavyweights, they just don't have the excitement factor um, from a personality perspective, and especially not um, with regards to getting opportunities because, you know these fighters have rematches and what will happen if fury loses win or lose he's probably going to fight joshua and the winner of that will probably then fight Usyk. you know it's going to go around in a vicious cycle you know whereby you just get the most marketable commodities being joshua Usyk, fury and potentially the bar all in that little mix and the undercard is just what it is occasionally we're going to get a good fight but from my perspective extremely disappointed extremely disappointed may not be the saudi's fault it may just be this is what's happened i mean surely there's good fights out there i'm not saying that the sport is finished um but outside of america if we're looking at what's going on at rehab season whilst i'm going to give them credit for some good cards if you break it down, are they really giving us a great spectacle or is there a lot of fluff there? I think we get some great fights with the top guys. I'll give them credit. You've also got to look at these undercars and ask yourself, are they really exciting? Are these fights you're sitting there going, I really want to watch or is it the spectacle, the fluff that is dragging the undercard up from a position of let's face it it's not great and isaac lowe that's all i'm gonna say 